Shalom and welcome. This is uh, tonight's Beit Rafa broadcast, and I'm Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and this is our Wednesday night uh, service. And uh, I want to welcome you this evening, and so glad that I uh, can come to you again. Uh, I know it's a little bit later than six, but needed the extra time this evening, so thank you for your patience. And uh, thank you for those beautiful hearts someone was sending, uh, floating up there. <laughs> thank you. Hallelujah. So uh, I want to say uh, good evening. I'm just going to get, I have a, a little thing to go behind my back here. It'll help me. Hold on. Be right back. Right here. Right here. Okay. Ah, there we go. Just had to get, grab onto that so it kind of supports my lower back there. Hallelujah. So anyway, uh, wow, <laughs> lots going on in the news, isn't it? I was just watching this evening a little and uh, and um, the Lord said something. And while I'm, you know what, I'm going to say hello to you in just a few minutes. But while I'm think, while uh, I'm thinking of it, it kind of floated up in, in, into my it floated up in my from my spirit, just like those hearts did just a few moments ago. <clears throat> the Lord says, I'm exposing. The word is expose. I'm exposing the uh the truth. I'm I'm sh I'm separating lies from the truth here in America and in, in the world. And as we come up closer to uh the election, we're going to see more and more <clears throat> corruption that has been on the left being exposed. <clears throat> and as we do, we'll see the only, the only way that uh, they can't deny it, but they'll resort to uh, uh, violence and, and any kind of, uh, uh, <clears throat> any kind of distraction and, and just, you know, well, we'll just make you, uh, make you do it this way. Well, see, lies can never trump, <laughs> never uh, overtake the truth. Uh, the truth it always wins. And uh, that's what God is doing right now in our nation. Now, it's, it's, uh, it's awful, you know, but it's kind of like, I mean, all the terrible things that we're, we're finding out and we're seeing, but it's kind of like <clears throat> when you bring uh, a lantern up into your attic that you haven't been in the attic in a long time, and you, you know, and before you turn the turn the lantern or the the, the flashlight on, and it just looks like the old attic that you always knew. But then when you turn the light on, and you think, oh my God, look at all this dirt that that uh, well, it's the light's fault. You know, if I didn't have, if the flashlight wasn't shining on it, then uh, there wouldn't be all this dirt here. Well, there's been a whole lot of bad things that have happened for a long time that have been covered up and swept under the rug. But the time comes when uh, God does a spring cleaning and he says, well, we're going to look under this rug here. <laughs> what's what's actually here? And, uh, and uh, also... Uh, you know, this is like, like we, we've known from the beginning when the Beit Rafa broadcast started and all the way back in March now and, and, and all the, uh, the Lord said it, that these days, uh, there's an acceleration. Things are, things are, are moving fast <clears throat> and everything is coming to full term. Everything is coming to harvest. Remember in the parable of uh, that Yeshua shared that the uh, <clears throat> that it would be let both grow together, both the uh, the righteous, the wicked, the the evil, the sin, and the right. The, let the tares and the wheat grow together, the weeds and the wheat. And as they get to the full end of the season, you the <clears throat> the wheat can fake it for a long. I mean the tares can fake it and say, we're wheat, we're wheat, we're just like the wheat. But then at harvest, uh, the the weight of the harvest of the uh, the wheat 
the of the of the uh, the good part, you know, that we eat, it, it it it's so heavy that it it bows down, it bows down. But the the weeds, since there's no there's there's no fruit on them, and they they still stand straight in their pride. And then he said, let both grow the harvest. Then in the time of the harvest, I'm going to send the angels, and the angels are going to uh, gather the wicked into bundles. In other words, they'll be separated, they'll be <clears throat> harvested and separated to be burned. And that's very, uh, very much a, a picture of the judgment that will come on the nations in the day of the Lord, the, the <clears throat> which we're rapidly approaching and in fact are in. We're in the beginning of the day of the Lord, the beginning of the seventh day or the time when the kingdom of God is uh, to take uh, dominion over the earth. Well, the kingdom of God is coming when fully when the king gets here and the king is coming. And Yeshua said, when you see all these things together, uh, along with the re Israel and uh, being uh, restored and and uh, <clears throat> you see all these things coming faster and faster like birth pangs upon a pregnant woman, then look up, your redemption draws nigh. So we're to keep a very close eye, not only on uh, <clears throat> on two things, like I said, the two things that we are to focus on in the end times. Yeshua said, first of all, he said, keep your eyes on, on, on him. Keep your eyes on the Lord when you see all these things. Not on, don't get, don't get uh, pulled into the fear uh, of looking at all those things coming on the earth. Yes, all these things are coming on the earth, but he said, look. Uh, look with the eyes of faith. Uh, look to the rock where you were hewn out of. That's what uh, the the and the the cistern. You know, you look look to uh, your Lord who is unshakable. There's an unshakable kingdom, and when all these things are shaken, if your life is built upon the rock, and the Lord is our rock, our fortress, our deliverer. He's the unmovable mover. He is the one that. Uh, that if you build your house upon him and doing his sayings, hallelujah, dig deep. And, and even when the storms, even of the end times come, they're not going, your house won't go down the river. You're not going to be, uh, you will not, uh, your, your heart will not fail along with others that are, their hearts in the world and their, their hearts will fail when they see all these things coming. Just like, I mean, you know, we don't remember, but we've seen clips of the 1929 uh, economic, the, the Wall Street crash, and and even then they were newsreels, and they were focused on, uh, and, and all these uh, people that, that, I mean, a number of them jumped out of their uh, high-rise uh, office windows and buildings, and <clears throat> why? Because... What happened was when the stock market collapsed, since their heart was, that's where their heart was, when it failed, their hearts failed with it, and then they lost hope. Well, even in this uh, shut-in time, there's been such a terrible increase of suicides and 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 uh, drug overdoses and uh, terrible uh, despair and fear and we had to pray for these people but that's why he said go on daily uh, uh uh the lord said to me he said go on daily and encourage my people and and get their heart into the see get your affections set your affections on things above not things on this earth that when when these things uh are shaken and when they and when they fail, because the world system is failing, it cannot. And more than the secular humanism that has has been the religion of the uh, the the modern world for the last hundred twenty years, but especially last seventy years or so, <clears throat> uh, sixty seventy years, that is being judged by God and it's failing and all the foundations that they thought the left has built their whole life on and been taught from little children. Pray for them when they're 
when their house comes crashing down, well, it's it's already crashing down. They're only the truth is uh, God is exposing and separating the truth from the lies. And and see, so what it will force what's being forced to happen is the light is exposing the darkness, and then you can identify it. So wait a minute. Well, that I was told I believe that. But that was a lie. But the truth of God, and Yeshua is the light of the world, the, 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 and also the biblical worldview, when we build our lives upon the word of God, it is, we are building it upon an unshakable foundation, a kingdom. Uh, heaven is not being affected by what's going on on earth. And we're citizens of heaven. We have a new uh new uh citizenship we we we're and 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 so hallelujah so we're living in two places where we're seated with him in heavenly places and we are occupying until he comes and all we have to do abide in the lord get into the secret place trust him and immerse yourself in the good things of god and when you see these things he says rejoice look up your redemption draws nigh. So what are you looking at? And that's a message I've I've said it in different ways, different times, quite a bit. Uh, what are you looking at in these uh, in this midnight hour? What are you what is your focus on? Are you focused on uh the Lord? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. And we can't see him with the natural. We see him with the eye of faith. Looking unto Jesus, the writer of Hebrews says, who's the author and finisher of our faith. And hallelujah, remember, he defeated. He said, uh, yeah, you're going to have tribulation in this world. <clears throat> but rejoice, for I have overcome the world. We're not in the... We, we're in this world. We're not of this world. We're, we've been born again out of this world. And uh, the God of this world with a small g, Satan, is not our God anymore. So, hallelujah. So, uh, what are you so worried about? <laughs> See, But this fear, it, 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 things that in the natural, people have, including Christians, including many that are, are they, they've actually built their, their security on, uh, on, the things in the world. But the Bible says, love not the world or the things of this world is passing away. Uh, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life is of this world. It's passing away. It's temporary. Set your affection. I mean, put your entire heart on deposit uh, in the Olam Haba, the world to come. Just go all in for the kingdom seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all these things yes they'll be added to you even in the midnight hour you can uh live in a place of safety according to psalm 91 of provision according to psalm 23 of of healing uh and of 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 uh you can live in a place of protection you can live in a place of a uh, secret place. And so as you see these things happening, the Lord is also building these places of refuge through uh, his ministry gifts uh, all over the world. And they're rising up. And, the, and what you're going to see as all this shaking goes on, you're going to see, yes, I'm in, in this election, which I will tell you uh, uh, will be... Uh, a time of great devastation for those who lose. <laughs> uh, their whole the government is their god. That's the only thing they have. They've been believing all these lies, and this uh, humanism is coming crashing down, and relativism and all these isms, all these uh, all these philosophies of men are just being smashed like, like like idols and God saying uh, that's not a God I, hello they shall know that I am the Lord he's saying hello your uh your relative truth 
uh, is not going to work anymore. And so this is the state of <laughs> September 23rd, 2020. And that's the way it is, or whatever they used to say, Paul Harvey, or whatever he used to say. Yeah, you know, and uh, Walter Cronkite. Remember when we had real journalists? <laughs> that was back a long time ago, but but they, they had integrity, and if they said something, you know, okay, that's I can trust that. Well, now, 90% uh, of any news you hear, uh, at even at, from the best of sources, you have to check it out. Because there's a whole lot of garbage, a whole lot of fake news, as our president calls it. Fake news. That's lies. So we're being flooded with lies. But God is shining his light, and the truth always trumps the lies. <laughs> yeah! Anyway, how did I... I got to preaching again, didn't I? Well, tonight well, I'm going to continue actually uh, reading from uh, the Lord. It definitely, I checked it out. Are you sure you want me to read this? But I'm going to continue in this book, chapter two, of this great uh, Christian uh, scholar and apologist and uh, philosopher, uh, and and it's just talking about. It's called a Christian manifesto, and I'm decreeing it just like a charismatic word of faith man, prophet would do, decreeing it into the earth and, and understand the underpinnings of how we got to where we are now and what, what is actually being destroyed. These, see, we, we, don't have, <clears throat> we don't have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't have Dagon, some some uh, uh, wood or stone statue that we're bowing down to, but we have idols in America, lots of them. <clears throat> and they are primarily for modern man is uh, in the realm of systems of thoughts. And that's where the real war is. And <clears throat> when, when you see the scripture, Paul says, a casting down imaginations, uh, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that is in the realm of, it's actually uh, what a stronghold is, is a system of thought that is, is like the nucleus is a lie. And somehow you're believing the lie, it's a bad seed planted in you, and then, and then there's a whole structure <clears throat> like the cell, if you will, or a, or a, a like a castle or a fortress that's built around a lie. That's how Satan gains dominion in human beings' lives, or, because he cannot unless you believe lies. Well, how do we know whether something's true or something's a lie? Am I building my life on uh, uh, vain imaginations or idolatry or false? or lies, or am, I, or am I building it on the truth? Well, what is the plumb line of truth? What, how can we know? Is there really right and wrong? Is there really uh, good and evil? Is there really God and Satan? Is there really absolute truth? Yes, and it's found in a person, and he's the Messiah, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the spirit of truth, hallelujah, is the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of evil spirits. Uh, and Satan is, the whole kingdom of darkness is built on, hath God said, uh, uh, it, lies of, of, of Satan. He's the father of lies. He's a liar. Well, stop listening to lies. I mean, that... That lady, the judge uh, on the Fox News, has a book, Don't Lie to Me. Well, <clears throat> what, how do we know that we're not being lied to? Well, you don't unless you understand that God gave us, uh, gave us the plumb line of truth. What is the plumb line of truth? This book right here. This book. This precious book. Oh, this book that came to us in a river of blood. 
this book that that uh, is the holy God of Israel speaking to us is eternal truth. Heaven and earth will pass away. My words, Yeshua said, will stand forever. Every jot and tittle, every uh, every cantillation mark, every every stroke of the brush of the of the the scribe of Levi, every every word of this holy book, this Jewish book. Hallelujah. Uh, is you can you can take it to the spiritual bank. You can if you build your life on this book, you're going to make you're going to stand because God upholds. He says, I have exalted Psalm 138, I have exalted my word above my name. And there's nothing as holy as the name of God. Uh, Shema Israel. Uh, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Uh, uh, yes, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. His name is sanctified. But it says here, Psalm 138, he's exalted his word above his name. In other words, he swears his very, uh, he cannot lie. God cannot lie. And this book is entirely trustworthy. Every, it's breathed out of the very heart of the Creator and our Father and our and the one who loves you the most, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm. You know what? I'm going to turn right there to Psalm 138. <clears throat> he says, "Now listen, a Psalm of David. Now David was the chief musician, or he was one of the he was the greatest musician of the Bible. I like God likes musicians. Hallelujah. We will we'll have a job. Well, I, you know he'll like me up there. He will be valued up there." <laughs> Even if our world is so crazy, we, we don't know what art and music is, they do up there. Hallelujah. And that up, what's up there is coming down here. Glory to God forever. And all evil will be thrown into prison. And uh, that's happening before our eyes. Uh, God is judging every idol and smashing it to smithereens. Glory to God. Well, how can you say that? Doesn't it look like they're taking over? No. It looks like they're in their last throes. That's what it looks like. There's something uh, There's something solid. There's something happening in America. Do you, I don't know if you will see it. All right. You may not think so now, but we get into November. You get past the election. <clears throat> watch what God does and watch what what is going to happen in the next 16 months says the spirit you're going to begin to realize how big god is and he's here and he's the god who is there and he's the god who rules and he's the god who separates light from darkness good from evil and exposes and judges shall not the judge of all the earth do righteously, of course he will. Hallelujah. It's time for us to actually have faith in God. <laughs> actually trust that he, he means what he says. All right, here it is, Psalm 138. I will praise thee with my whole heart. You see, you gotta get your whole heart in him. You, He's the God to worship. We will worship something. You're a worshiping being. You're going to worship whatever your God is. But you have to turn to the living and true God and begin to understand. You have to praise him. He has to have all your heart. He, uh, you have to go all in. You know, the, the, uh, <laughs> in the Jesus movement, a little before me, but I got in on the tail end, you know. In the mid-70s, I came in, but I was just a kid, but... Uh, they would say things like, you know, forsake all. Actually, that's what Jesus said, forsake all and follow him. The forsake all part is what we don't like to hear much about, but that's the very core. Jesus has to be Lord, absolute Lord, 100% Lord. He, 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 
gets he's gets to drive the car he gets to own the show and they would say you know it's the system man it's the system in, in the 60s you know and it was the evil system well you know and they and this the communal approach was not necessarily the right answer and it was the hippie time and you know there was a, a very similar spirit to what is rising up now except uh that it, it it wasn't quite, it, and it was linked somewhat to Marxism. Now, though, this is the total exposure of the, the, the evil that it actually is. It's being contained. It's like a trapped animal. Uh, it was stopped tonight in Louisville, Kentucky. Stopped in its tracks. Just stopped. That doesn't mean that, you know, we still have, you know, and then there's going to be, the next four weeks, I'm telling you, the next five, six, seven weeks are going to be uh, it's going to be crazy because this is the death throes of the snake, you know, it's trying to to bite before it after its head is cut off. All right, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods. That's every demon, every idol. Will I sing praise unto thee? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Go before the army of the Lord, Jehoshaphat's army, and praise the beauty of holiness. Praise the most high God. Why? Because he's worthy and he's so wonderful. <laughs> That's a weapon. We go, the praisers go uh, before. They go before the army of the Lord. You know, there was a... Uh, I guess I'm supposed to preach on this. I didn't realize there was a a a uh, yeah uh, there was the the I think it was the regiment in Scotland of the bagpipe players that uh, <clears throat> there were men that were uh, uh, I think it was the Black Watch and several others and they literally would go in front of the armies playing their bagpipes and it would it would strike the enemy with fear and even in world war ii the nazis called these the ladies from hell because when they would you couldn't touch them and i'm telling you the angels would go for it yeah is war war Musicians are warriors. Did you know that? I'm a warrior. That's what I am. Man, I tell you what. And we've been through some fights. We go before the army of the Lord. Why? Because music and praise stills the enemy and the avenger. It stops the devil in his tracks. There's nothing he can do. So we sing praises to him when everything looks like it's the midnight hour and Paul and Silas are in the prison and they've been beaten to an inch of their lives and they're thrown in the stocks. What do they do? They don't say, Silas doesn't say to Paul, Paul, I thought you, I thought you heard from God. Didn't you have a vision? Boy, you sure missed it. Well, I know. I... No, they begin at midnight. They began to sing praises to God in that and that's where the miracle and then God shook the shook the the prison and uh, until all the chains fell off not only and it says the and the prisoners were listening and they were singing and they were singing and they were praising God and just to have strength just to be alive was a miracle but they had they were singing hallelujah and God shook that jail praise the Lord, and and every chain fell off, glory to God, of all the prisoners, and the prison doors were opened, hallelujah, and the jailer and his family get saved, why? Because when God shakes things, uh, he gets everybody's attention, and God's getting everybody's attention here, and even in, in the good old U.S. of A., we're not going to be able to depend on our own uh, you know, self-sufficiency anymore. You're going to realize uh, that we can do this the easy way or the hard way, and God's very, very merciful. But he is, the shaking's begun, and it's not going to stop uh, in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, you're going to see 
uh, glory in the camp of the righteous and victory. But you're going to, and, and the house of David grew stronger and stronger. The house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. This is what we're seeing politically right now. And uh, the the uh, so-called uh, left, uh, the 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 um, the dem what the Democratic Party has become. See, it used to be there was there was good in the Democratic Party. Well, what's happened now is it's just every single they've embraced every single Antichrist uh, plank of the platform, and there's not one biblical. There's not one thing that's that it's built on lies, and the whole thing is going to come crashing down. And I don't know if this will be the end of the Democratic Party, but it will be, uh, it will be so mortally wounded that it will never rise again in the same form. Certainly not. Uh, not until uh, we can return back into a biblical worldview which I'm going to get into. Oh my goodness, it's already seven o'clock. Well, thank God, I've only gone a half hour. <laughs> Glory! Excuse me. Verse two. <laughs> I will worship. So we praise, we sing praise, even before the gods. And with my whole heart, I proclaim the praises of him who brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. He is the only God, the, the one, blessed be he. And then I will worship toward thy holy temple. Well, Jews do that no matter where they are in the world. Hallelujah. Every morning, the, the, uh, the devout uh, Jews, they'll turn towards, uh, turn towards Jerusalem, even if they're on an airplane. You ever been in an airplane heading to Israel? Well, they'll be facing forward then. <laughs> Oh, and they'll get up right at the crack of dawn, and uh, and they'll uh, and they'll turn towards the temple. Well, that's so that's the literal meaning, but it also means towards uh, it towards the temple. And of course, he dwells in us now. We turn in and we we bow before him, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. We. We praise and worship him because, because of his great name, the great integrity of the Lord, and his chesed, loving kindness, uh, tender mercies, uh, the, the, the great merciful, the good God who's merciful, hallelujah, and for thy truth. See, God is a God of truth. There isn't, there isn't any lies in him. You want to find out what's true? Open this book. And uh, hallelujah. This translation from 400 years ago is about as good as it gets in English. And there are good translations. I'm not saying when. Uh, in fact, I'm reading one now just because it's a little fresh and I like it. Um, it's very good. Still, though, it doesn't have, doesn't put the meat on the bones like the King James for me. But, I like the E E S V Bible because it's very, very accurately translated in modern English. All right. Anyway, so it says, "Praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth." Now here it is: for thou hast magnified or exalted thy word above all thy name. Hallelujah. In other words. God has sworn by his very name. You know, God has more than one name, but he has, he is the name, Hashem, the name, the, the, the holy name of God is so holy, the, the Orthodox Jews won't even say it. They won't even, the Tetragrammaton, you know, won't say it. We can loosely kind of say Yahweh or Yahweh, and we can kind of a transliteration of it, but it's so holy. It's, it's his name. And in God's name is everything he is. But then the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus, he is exalted above every name. And God has 72 different names and hundred and something, according to attributes of 
his character, of his holy character. He is, he is the holy one. He is the, the healer. He is, that's what Rafa, uh, Yahweh Rafa, he's, uh, he is our peace, our shalom. He is our, he's always there. He's Shama, he's there. He's, he's manifested, always, all knowing, all, all these attributes of Almighty God. Most of all, he's a good, he's good. He is good and his mercy endures forever. But he says, I've exalted my word, this book above even his name. In other words, he says, if he swears in blood of his own son that every single word promised and declared in this book he swears before on his name, on his word. He will do what he said he will do. If any being in the universe keeps his word, it's the most high God. That's why we can depend on it. He's the God of all truth. Well, we've got to return to truth. You see, what we've done and what has happened to all generations of, of fallen sinful men and women, is we've made God in our image. We want God to be the way we are. We're going to change truth, so we make God the way we want him to be. Well, he's not going to change, sweetheart. He's the same. He was he was the way he was before you came along. He'll be that way when you're gone, too, as far as your physical life on this planet. Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, it. you might as well, you know, understand something. If you're believing lies, uh, that's really stupid. It, it, you're a fool. Yeah. The Bible calls those who refuse to believe the truth and believe God and his word. He says, the fool says there's no God. Now, a fool is someone who deliberately chooses to be ignorant, deliberately chooses to be foolish. You choose lies over truth. God says you're a fool and you're an eternal fool too because you're, if you believe lies, it will send you straight into a devil's hell. And uh, uh, I suggest you, you repent. That's what repent means. Repent means turn back, turn away from lies and turn to the truth. Well, this book contains the very image, the ultimate truth. There is no, there is no other source that we have uh, of absolute truth. So this is the, uh, the, the sole foundation of God's kingdom and his very name, his very throne, all of heaven and earth are sustained. It says Yeshua, the word of God, this is the word, written word. He's the living word. He sustains everything or he holds it together. You know, a physicist wonder what in the world holds matter together because basically matter is a whole lot of empty space. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny nucleus and then all these electrons and whatever, you know, the protons and neutrons and the electrons, the atoms. Well, what holds the atoms together? And they're still... They're still, and they realize there's something there. Well, the Bible says that all of matter is held together, all what we call matter in science, but it's a, what we call energy and matter, which is the, the physical realm. It's all, it says it's held together by the word of Yeshua and his power. He is the word of God. When God said, light be, that was Yeshua himself before he became a man. He became a man, but before he was the holy word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, the word was, was God. That's why I spend so much time, I say get the Bible in your mouth, think on it, saturate, brain wash, wash your brain. <laughs> yeah, wash your brain out of uh, lies and into truth. And it's that's not a it's a good kind of washing of the brain. You wash your wash. I'm gonna wash those devil's lies 
right out of my hair and out of my spirit and out of my body. And I, I just refuse to believe lies anymore. And I tell you what, when you get to that place, the devil, you become the devil's worst nightmare because you can't be cornered anymore. And you win in the battles of life. Why? Because truth prevails over lies just as much as light penetrates the darkness. The light is here and the darkness cannot overtake it. That's Isaiah 61. Is it? Isaiah, arise, arise, shine, <laughs> shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Great darkness will cover the earth and the people, but my light shall shine. There's no stopping God's light. He's all powerful. That's another. He's the almighty. <laughs> Amen. He's, he's the, wow, what a name. What a name God has. What every, magnify his name. But he says, I magnify my word above my name because the word of God actually is the light of God. And all those things are, are true. They're not just symbols. You know, well, it's like this. Well, it's like this. Well, I, Yeshua's parables are that. They're comparative. Well, the kingdom of God is like a treasure hidden in a field. or It's like the pearl of great price. Or it's like, well, Yeshua's giving natural physical examples, it's like uh, a man who plants uh, corn in his field or whatever. Uh, it, it's like this. So, But what is God? God is primarily four things. First of all, he is what that book says, holy. He's holy. He's holy. If there's something that this generation the church needs more than it. They have to, they need the knowledge of the holy. I've, I, we need to learn about how holy, how awesome God is. He's absolutely pure. There's not one, one speck of, of fault in him. There's not a, a, absolute perfection, perfection of glory. Oh, hallelujah. And, God is love. God is love. Praise the Lord. The highest kind of love. Unconditional love. A new kind of love called agape. The love of God is the uh, very essence of the Father's heart of who God is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is love. But first, he's holy. He's holy. He's a God of law and order. <laughs> He's a God of right and wrong. <clears throat> and, and it finds its source. And this, this is the sword. Remember I said yesterday, uh, Yeshua said, this, uh, he destroys his enemies with the sword that comes out of his mouth, a two-edged sword. That God's word separates light from darkness. And it is light. It's a sword, a two-edged sword that penetrates uh, and divides. Well, God's doing that in the earth in, in a spectacular way right in front of us in this generation. But most of us are are too stuck in the mud and the mire <clears throat> of the natural realm to understand that, see, if you just look in the natural, you would think Satan is winning. He's going he's gonna to win the whole, oh, it's all over. It's all over. Run for the hills. <clears throat> Stick your head in the sand like an ostrich. Uh, take some pills and go to bed. <laughs> or uh, get get so high on drugs that, you know, take pain pills. Just anything. Just get me out of this pain. Just get me out. Get me out. Get, get me out of this hopelessness. I don't want to feel. Well, God's word will pull you out of it. It'll give you supernatural hope. Where are you looking? Like I said, the two places where to look. I have to go back to that now. Where in the end times, we're to look, keep our eyes on the Lord himself. 
with, and, and how do you do that? By looking into his word and staying in his word. This is how you see him. That's how you gaze upon his beauty and recognize he's bigger than all of the darkness around you. He overcomes. It says the light came into the darkness, John chapter one, and the darkness could not quench it or overcome it. The light dispels the darkness. Hallelujah. The light of the world has come. He's here. Joy to the world. Hallelujah. The Lord is come. He's here. He's come. Light is bursting out of me right now. I can feel it. I die. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. And that life will bring you hope. So anyway, so God, uh, we're to keep our eyes on the master. What else are we supposed to look at? We are to look at something in the natural. It says it in John chapter four. Let's look over. Actually, I'm going to read that to you. The fourth chapter of John. Yeshua is speaking. I love the gospel of John because hallelujah, the light <laughs> has come. It's, uh, he said, and life, uh, that you may believe. He wrote these things that you may believe <laughs> in the light. Trust in it. All right, so here we are. Uh, John chapter 4. And uh, Yeshua says this. Verse... 34, let's look at that. Yeshua saith unto them, my meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's my food too. That's how I get, you know what? Do you feel weak? You need nourishment? Hallelujah, start doing what God, doing God's work and you'll get happy, glad and free and strong. Yeah, the greatest therapy I have, and I don't believe me, I, I had challenges today. I, you know, uh, this doesn't just this ground does not go unchallenged. But I just we just persevere. But the greatest therapy I've ever had is to go on and minister every day like I'm doing. This is this helps me. Why? Because I it's my nourishment. It's it's my meat, and that's what Yeshua was saying here. Because they were. The disciples thought, uh-oh, he didn't have lunch. He sat down at a well. He was tired. He was thirsty. But uh, he said, and they're so fixated, have you had lunch? Had you had lunch? And he says, well, uh, no, but, but God is sustaining me. My food is to do what he wants me to do, to finish his work. Say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest, Behold, I say unto you, and that's what I'm saying unto you, God is saying unto you tonight, lift up your eyes and look where? Look where? On the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. So we've got to be about our Father's business, but in order to do that, you've got to get your attention off of Where's my food and drink? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Ah, and all the, all the needs that are there. Put your eyes on the prize. What is the prize? Well, Jesus is the pearl of great price. He's the prize of all. But then get your eyes on the prize of God. You know where God's eyes are? God's eyes are on the, on the lost, on the perishing, on the desperate the sighing, dying, crying humanity, John Osteen used to say, uh, go, God didn't say go deep. He said, go out, go, go into the highways and by, go. Get your eyes on the world God has called you to go into and to finish your work. And that's where you'll get your sustenance. That's where provision is. That's where uh happiness and joy is that's where strength comes from supernatural strength hallelujah that's where uh the peace of god is that's where the abundant life is you want the abundant life get your eyes off of me myself and i get your eyes off of lunch get it what am i gonna do what oh 
And I, you know what? Sometimes that's hard because there's emotions that can attack you sometimes and they're strong and you got to turn those emotions and, and they don't turn so easy. Sometimes it's, it's a fight, isn't it? I find the number one way Satan wars against my mind and my soul is in the realm of emotional storms. But they, they come and they go. They pass real fast. Look how many you've been through, probably even today. And, and you know what? You survived. And most of the time your emotions are screaming lies at you. And, and you just have to, you have to recognize it and you have to turn your emotions. You have to turn them with peace, be still. You have to get God's word in your mouth and take dominion over the emotional storms. Peace, be still. I'm going to pass over to the other side. And then, hallelujah, rest in him. Go to sleep in the boat with Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to get you through. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. And all right. For they are white already to harvest. So, and then he talks about sowing and reaping here and how we're entered into other men's labors. So everything, remember I said everything in the kingdom of God is sowing and reaping. Everything, everything. That's why uh, the parable of the sower is so important. You are... Uh, you are a farmer, whether you want to be or not, a spiritual farmer. And so, hallelujah. But if you want to get into the real highest levels of spiritual farming, then, then just sow and plant and water and reap God's holy word. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mouth. Get it in your in the in the morning, in the new time, noon time, in the evening, and all day long and all night long. Meditate therein day and night that you may see, that you may observe to do it. And when you do it, that's when that's when heaven comes. Hallelujah. When you get into action, when you start living like the Bible and the New Testament's actually true. And uh, you, well, it says here, by his stripes, I am healed, but my stomach, I'm throwing up. Well, well, which one am I? Am I going to believe the throwing up part, which is the storm? Is it happening? Yes, the storm is raging, but that's not who I am. That's the, that's trying to steal the healing from me, not I'm the sick and I need to get healed. Now, <clears throat> I went down to uh, just, uh, you know, it's time we Christians don't pretend that we never have any problems or we don't have battles. Oh, are you kidding? Paul said this, many are the afflictions of the righteous. I can testify. Uh, uh, but he delivereth him out of them all. Glory, glory, glory. My name is Maury. And I approve this message. <laughs> no, it's, it's really true. This, this will keep you. So we have to keep our eyes on the prize. We have to keep our eyes. You know, I used to play table tennis, uh, ping pong, a fancy name for ping pong. It's, but it's, it's a real sport. It, it, and uh, as a teenager, I <clears throat> lived in Houston in a neighborhood that had the Houston Table Tennis Club, right? And they'd play all day Saturday. So I had this old Jewish guy named Barry Melamud who took me under his wing as a 14-year-old. And I, he started hitting with me, teaching me, training me. And you know what? I got pretty good at it. Uh, and I'm still, I mean, I was at least. I'm not, I don't play now, but I was an intermediate level tournament player. Um, so, but the one thing, you know, you have to keep what your eye on the ball. You keep, don't let your you have to you have to keep your eye on the ball, especially if it's spinning. How is it spinning? How how what how how where is it coming? How fast is it coming? And you 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 follow it. Well, in the same way, we've got to set before our eyes in this midnight hour, as the bride of Messiah, the the army of the Lord. We have to. Uh, Keep our eye on the Lord, and we have to keep our eye on the uh, the work that God's called us to do, which is 
Hallelujah. The harvest, the the world God's called us into. Now, maybe you're like, I love what Oral Roberts, uh, uh, God told him years ago about the, uh, you know, uh, train up the students of the university so that they would go into their world. Every person has their unique world. It might be medicine. It might be law. It might be uh, uh, music. <laughs> it might be uh, uh, science. It might be, <clears throat> I don't know, what has God called you to do? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, all right, I'll tell it. This is how you find out. What do you love? What do you, what do you just, what just makes the little birdies sing on the inside? Of you? What do you love to do the most? Most likely what you're called to do and the work you're called and the world you're called to go into will uh, be the desire of your heart. What is it that makes you hum inside and makes you happy? Zippity doo da, zippity hey. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Mr. Bluebird's on my shoulder, right? Yeah, well, what what makes uh, the sun shine for you? What makes the... What makes the, uh, <clears throat> what's the cat's meow for you? That's the world that you are called, and we all have something different. I mean, and as little children, before we became adults and learned how to, to doubt and, 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 and uh, learned how to, to, to tear ourselves down and, uh, and let the devil lie to us and tell us we can't do anything. Well, I'm created to punch this clock at Walmart well, maybe for a little while, but I tell you what, uh, maybe there's something more. What is it? Does that make, if that makes your heart go pitter patter, then maybe that is what, you know, okay. But you'll always know, like I always say it this way, well, well I don't know what, what does God want me to do in life? What is the world I'm supposed to go into? What I would say, okay, let's say I was a very, 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 very rich man, which I am in Messiah, right? Well, and I come to you and I say, here, here, here's a hundred million, here, deposited in your name in a Cook Island or somewhere, secret account, no safe, no one can touch it. Okay, you can access it anytime you want. Do anything you want. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? And then make, then start dreaming. And I guarantee you, after a little while, you're going to find what it is <laughs> that makes you uh, makes you happy. What 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 is your uh, your? All right, let's say it this way: primary purpose. What is it that? That's where it's at. That's where it's at. And. I tell you, if you ever get to the place where you will take what it is God actually put in your heart to do and dare to believe that and do and act on it, just like Abraham did, I used to say this, I'd say, I'd say this, I'd say it now. When you do what Abraham did, you'll get what Abraham got. <laughs> what did he do? In fact, everybody in Hebrews chapter 11 did the same thing. Well, let's turn to Hebrews chapter. Oh, boy, I'm just getting into a faith message now, and and you know what? The uh, I I didn't even get a chance to greet you, but I'm I love you, and I'll I'm saying hi, and and I'll I'll do it before long. And uh, this was another preemptive Holy Ghost night. I see that I've been superseded. <laughs> My intentions were good. I prepare, I was ready to do something different. <laughs> but I'm doing this now. So, uh, But let's look at Hebrews 11, the hall of fame of the great faith heroes of the first covenant, right? Okay, and the second. It says, through faith, by faith, now faith. And then starting in verse four, it says, by faith, Abel, okay, that's the first, that's the first uh, son, the, the, the righteous son of, 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 of Adam, right? By faith, Abel, now look, there's a verb, offered 
He did something. By faith, did you know faith without works is dead? <laughs> it doesn't mean a condemnation of religious observance, like if you, you better be good, good. You, it means that faith acts. Faith works. Faith <laughs> faith is not faith until it is a verb. So look at this. Uh, we understand through faith, first of all, verse 3, that the worlds were framed by God's word. He spoke it into existence, the whole universe. That which is seen was not made by that which appears. See, so the whole natural realm is not the parent, it's the child of the spirit realm. So the spirit realm is the, the, the origin of the natural realm. Therefore, you're not going to find... You're not going to find the origin of all things by just looking in the natural world. You have to look at the creative act, which was the spoken word of the Father, because that was an action. We understand by faith this. <clears throat> by faith, Abel offered <clears throat> unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Okay, so by faith, because Abel believed, he brought a righteous offering of blood from uh, the animal, which was God's pattern, okay, instead of the vegetables <laughs> that Cain brought. And God saying it was a righteous sacrifice, a worthy sacrifice. By faith, Enoch, what, was translated. Okay, there's another verb. You'll see a verb after each one of these names. Enoch, because he believed, he was the first to be raptured, glory to God, out of heaven into earth. <clears throat> he should not see death. <clears throat> okay, then it says, by faith, Noah, what did he do? Prepared an ark, built the ark. Noah built by faith. He did what God said. God gave him a specific assignment. That's what God does for us. He always will give you something. And that's, and it's impossible. There's no way you can do it. You know, how in the world? I mean, I could tell you the three great miracles in the history of the world as far as uh, uh, I'm concerned. Uh, Mo uh, Moses part of the Red Sea. Yeshua rose from the dead. And God got the violin in the charismatic church. The three great miracles in the history of the world. That was a miracle. Who's going to, I mean, who in the world is going to want a violent, you know. I, God did it. It was impossible. But by faith, I acted on it. He did it. And that's why everything, God always comes with a promise. And as you dare to believe it and then just throw yourself into it, guess what? Hallelujah. That becomes a vision. And that is the world that's for the purpose of harvest. That's the harvest God has called you. That's the world God's called you into. Hallelujah. <clears throat> By faith, Abraham, what did he do? He sojourned. He went first. He went. He left all and went. He finally got Lot out. He took Lot with him. He shouldn't have, but he finally separated from Lot and God and and. He's, he went, he went, go to the land, I will show you. So he went, he left everything. And then, what else did he do? By faith, Abraham received. He received his inheritance, the great covenant of Abraham, promise, hallelujah. And he received his children, he received Isaac. By faith, he what did, else did he do? Well, no, it says, let's go back to Noah. Just for faith. Not only did Noah uh, not only built the ark, but he condemned the world. Well, that's pretty heavy. He was a preacher of righteousness. He became the heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. You don't realize Noah was the heir of the righteousness by faith. And then, of course, Abraham, glory to God. He received it as an inheritance through uh, blood covenant, but he, he obeyed by 
See, there's another word. He obeyed what? The word, go, leave your family, go to the land I will show you, I will give you. And then there's the promise. I will make you a great, I'll give you a great name. I'll make you. I'll give you a great family. I'll give you a great nation. I'll make you into a great nation. And you'll be the father of many nations. That's what God promised. But how did he, Abraham receive that? He received that by, first of all, leaving all, going. Leave your world and go into my world. So he left all. He obeyed. He went out, even though he didn't know where he was going. And Verse 9 here says, by faith he sojourned, he remained. He wandered around in the desert there in uh, Israel uh, in the land of promise, as in a strange country. He didn't see any of these. He didn't see it in the natural. Dwelling in tabernacles or tents. He was uh, like a nomad. He was uh, like the... the um, Oh, what, you know what you the 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 Bedouin people. He was a, like a Bedouin, uh, dwelling in tavern tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Now, by faith, verse ten, he did something else. He looked, he looked, he saw something. He looked for a city. He saw something that that was not seen in the natural, but he looked by faith, and he saw the heavenly city, the celestial city of the Pilgrim's Progress or the New Jerusalem. God preached the gospel to him and he saw the Messiah and he saw his kingdom and he saw New Jerusalem and he saw that city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. He saw it. He looked upon it by faith. That's how you have to look upon uh Especially God's rhema word to you. What Your purpose. You have to see that God means what he says. And he's going to do it. You are. If God says you're this and you're going to do that, then guess what? That's it. And uh, there's no vote on it. There's no Now you can cooperate with it or you can hinder it. But it's going to happen. The one thing about God is whatever he says comes to pass. Uh, you might as well just... Stop arguing with God. You'll never win an argument with God. I've tried. Take it from a Jewish boy. We argue, we argue with everything. We argue, we, we, we fuss and argue, but hallelujah. In the end, uh, by faith, Abram, Abraham obeyed. He believed, he obeyed. Through faith, Sarah, what did she do? She received strength to conceive. She became a young, beautiful woman. Uh, I've only seen that miracle uh, one time in my life of one lady that I can really say, I think that happened to her. I won't tell you who it is. Of course, it's my wife, of course. No, 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 I, but uh, that's, I, that's an amazing miracle, isn't it? By faith, she became so beautiful. beautiful. Abraham says, you're the most beautiful, I mean, Kings will, I mean, he said, tell, tell them you're, <laughs> tell them you're my sister if we're going down to Egypt, because otherwise they're going to, the, they're going to take you into their harem and you'll be the, the hot, hot tamale there, you know? So, <clears throat> but by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive and delivered Isaac at ninety years something years old and then sprang sprang out of one that was dead many multitudes stars of the heavens sand of the sea and then verse 13 says they all what died in faith these patriarchs these fathers well if you're gonna die don't die in doubt die in faith see and if someone's saying well i believe i'm healed and that well my aunt susie she was a good christian and and if anybody believed God, it was her, and she died of the hopagoodle disease and or whatever. And and I, you know, God, why didn't? Well, wait a minute. Did she die in faith? She's healed. This body, psh, we're getting a new one. Praise the Lord. She's healed. She did. She died in faith. That's all right. Hey, if, even when I'm going down, I'm going down believing God, not doubting Him. 
all right? And by faith, they uh, embraced the promises, having only seen them afar off, so they embraced it. And they confessed it, that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. You ever felt like this isn't your home? You know why? This earth is not my home. Did, have, you, have, you, have you got that yet? This isn't home. We're passing through. We're strangers and pilgrims, sojourners. And even in the best of life, no matter what, it's nothing like that city. Oh, hallelujah. I'm looking forward. My, my heart's in the kingdom. My heart is in the olam haba, the world to come. Praise the Lord. Now that's going to be something special. Oh, my hope is anchored in there. It's anchored there. And hallelujah, I don't care. You know, this little sliver of time, I get my work done and I'm going to a better place. Praise the Lord. I look for a city by faith whose builder and maker is God. Boy, I'm preaching good tonight, aren't I? And I didn't even know I was going to do this. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Hallelujah. I'm not, first of all, a citizen of of America, the United States, or Israel, or, or anywhere. I'm first now born into, born again, spiritually, into the citizenship of heaven and the kingdom of God coming to the earth. And it's here in me right now. Praise the Lord. By faith, I sojourn there. I dwell there, even though I'm walking in this natural body. But I'm seeking that country. That's where my heart is. Uh, so, <clears throat> by faith, they didn't return. It says, verse 15, they kept seeking that unseen heavenly city, kingdom. Now they desire a better country, a heavenly. And because of that, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath repaired for them a city. Hey, I'm, I've already got my application in. Chief musician. <laughs> Fiddler of the New Jerusalem. That's what God told me. He said, he said okay, well, but nobody wanted me down here, really. ICM management passed me over. So did Columbia artists. So did, uh, uh, <clears throat> so did Opus Three or whoever else or VM BMG or whoever else is the music manager. They they all they said, oh no, you don't glitter enough. You don't have enough flash or something or whatever. No, God didn't call me. He he told me. He said, you sow it into the kingdom. And you watch what I do to your eternal career. I said, amen. And then he put this glory on me. Hallelujah. And he said, instead of just entertaining people for one night, he said, I'll change lives forever. Which do you want? That was the calling. That was the word God gave me. He gave me a word from heaven. Uh, and he said, uh, he said, would you go? and minister and perform for me. And he put it in the form of a question. I had a choice. Isn't that something? Just a young man, spring of 1991. God came into my car. Well, it was spectacular. I know it doesn't have to be say. It's just down inside of you. You'll know. You know what it is. It's inside of you like a, a just like a, a, a a grape seeds inside a grape or a, you know, it's down in you. It's a part of you, who you are. You are destined to reproduce after your kind. That's what God, we get happy when we multiply. Yeah, we're supposed to multiply, be fruitful, be blessed, be multiply, be, increase, increase, increase. Hallelujah. Uh, so uh, what was I saying? Oh, God said to me, he said, son, this is what he said. You could entertain people for one evening, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you will go and minister and perform for me, I will do more than just entertain people for one night. 
I will change lives forever. Which do you want? And I am overcome, melted over the steering wheel. Thank God I parked because I was sobbing my guts out. I mean, not guts out. You just, 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 just boo-hooing. I mean, the glory came into my, I couldn't even see out. The, it was a, a cloud, like I was up in the airplane kind of cloud. It was a glory cloud came into my car. Uh, <clears throat> and, and I said, Lord, I want to do whatever you want. And he said, <clears throat> then the next thing he said, and this is where I should have negotiated more. I, you know, just, but God has a way of persuading you, you know, <laughs> just kidding, joking. Did you know God likes to joke and laugh? Did you know that? He's not so, he has a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun. God is a lot of fun. He's like Mel Brooks, you know, he can, he loves it. He loves it when we, when we laugh and, and, and he made us to, he thinks, he just, he loves it when we make him laugh and make him, you know, and he, cre he created us to have fun. Did you know that? <laughs> and he has fun with us. All right. Uh, but then he said this to me, and this was kind of a, a, a heavy thing. And, and uh, he said, are you willing to play on your violin? Now, I heard audible. I heard his voice like Moses at the bush. I actually heard it. I thought it was audible. It sounded audible to me. If that wasn't audible, I don't know what audible is. It was out loud. He said, <clears throat> are you willing to play on your violin? what the world calls foolish and simple because I do my greatest works in the earth <clears throat> through what the world calls foolish and simple. And right there, he outlined the psalmist ministry, showed me, uh, which, is, uh, which was really the, for the first, certainly the first five years of my ministry was, was the only, th that's what, that's what I did. I just went and played and played music. And then God added, uh, because he actually said, the words he actually said was, will you go and minister and perform for me? And he put it in that order, minister, perform. So <clears throat> I am a minister first, then I am a concert violinist or performer. Then I, so both are valid, but <clears throat> they're in a divine order. So anyway, but I, I, I didn't know what he meant, and I should, you know, I didn't realize what a, <clears throat> that there would be a, a cross in that. And the greatest cross of my life has been enduring the music of the charismatic 20 and 21st century church worship. That's been the greatest cross. <laughs> what do you mean? Well... I didn't, I didn't grow up in that kind of music. It was another, another kind of music. Uh, so, <clears throat> but the Lord showed me serve and honor and bless my people. They're doing the best they can. And, and hallelujah, I'll teach them. Eventually they'll learn. Don't worry. Don't worry. They'll all go to music school. And then, you know, 100 years into the millennium, they'll start playing well. Don't worry. <laughs> just have faith. Look at them. Yeah, they're just getting started. This is an eternal thing I've got going. I said, yeah, okay, okay. But, you know, dear Lord, I, I, I said, I don't know if I have that much faith. Because I had to teach these violin students that, that came freshmen in college, Oral Roberts University on fire for God. And they came in to my studio the first semester, bless their darling hearts, and I, I they a either left uh, in tears or extremely angry at me. One of, one of them cussed me out. I mean, actually cussed me out. Why? Well, I didn't understand that not everybody uh, is supposed to be play like Yasha Heifetz and, and 
you know, or whatever. I didn't understand, I didn't grow up in that world of, of the Midwestern small Christian uh, university. And, but they come, they get into college and they, 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 they can't tell if something's in tune or not. I, what happened to you? Well, I didn't realize, you know, I've, I was in a very different world, immersed in a different world. So I had to adjust. It took me a while. I'm still adjusting. I'm still adjusting, believe me. Hallelujah. So that's a big question. Are you willing? Yes, sir, I'm willing. And then God's done something. And of course, he takes the pride. And you know, see, the church is very quick, very quick to say, ah, you see, you elitist snob. You just, you just think you know it. And, you know, God uses the, the, the you know, yes, of course he uses the, the foolish and simple. All of us are foolish and simple to him. But, uh, <clears throat> but what if you knew, what if you, what if you, uh, uh, let's think of uh, somebody, uh, Michelangelo, there's a great artist. What if you watched Michelangelo uh, paint the Sistine Chapel and, uh, and you go, wow, never seen anything like that. And there's only a few maybe or something like that. You know, nobody like him. He could turn around and make a sculpture that looks so real it is alive. Or uh, that kind of art and music. And then realize, uh, and then you, 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 you think, uh, well, how am I, how... Well, I have to teach you, okay, this is red, this is burgundy, this is, you know, so it, it, it was a whole adjustment of my worldview, and the Lord required that of me, and that's a good thing. Yes, you snob. Well, am I, or am I not? Or maybe I might know something. Maybe there's value in excellence. You think there's value in excellence? Or should we all just be mediocre? Should we all just be poor? Is that God's will? Well, it's not happening in heaven. I guarantee you, there's a learning process. And you have to demand, you have to demand of yourself the very best you can do. And that's where you see the highest uh, development in uh, uh, the creative nature that God gave us. We're creators because he's the ultimate master artist, creator. And you get better as you practice. You can do something better. You can draw, you can draw a curve and it actually, you can practice it. Well, I'm going to do that 10 times. Okay. I, or, well, okay. How do I shade this eyelid here? You know, and you practice it and you practice it for five years. And finally you understand, oh, well, if I mix it just this way, then I get that hue. And uh, see, this is where uh, that can be torture for somebody that has God put that in an artist that to demand this kind of thing. And yet, uh, what really is the biggest cross of Christian, the Christian uh, realm of our hour here is not that the the level of skill is low that's not it or whatever it's, it's it's the unwillingness to learn that they don't and not only do they not want not, not only do they they uh they they're at the level whatever it is but they don't want to learn and they don't want to know they'd rather just stay in their little box, in their little world. And that's, to me, that's a tragedy of epic Shakespearean proportions. <laughs> it's a tragedy, it's a great crime. But, okay, I got one thing on my side. How did I get over into this? I don't know, I was wrestling with something today, that's why. Um, uh, how, how can I say it? 
we're eternal beings and we're going to get there. And that's why I don't despair. <laughs> eventually, eventually, when we'll go, oh, oh, wait, I, God will, we'll learn, we'll grow, we'll think, we'll expand, we'll desire to learn. And there's a joy in the process of learning. And uh, I'd rather, I'd rather not, uh, I'd rather recognize, okay, not only, okay, if I'm a novice, I'm a novice. Okay, fine. But I don't have to stay there. Uh, you know, here we go. When we've been there 10,000 years, Shining as the sun, right? We won't play so bad and worship so low. We'll have grown and become. <laughs> we, will, we will be in realms that we can't imagine right now. And that's when we're starting to get real happy. Hallelujah. So don't ever get to the place where you don't want to read or grow or learn or think. You know what? That's a shame. If you ever get to a place where you're just existing and emoting and, and surviving as a, as a believer instead of growing and learning and, and demanding of yourself, creating, you know, if you stop doing that, then guess what? You're not living the abundant life. You haven't, then something died inside of you. Well, let's bring it back to life. Anyway, how did I get over there? Well, that's what I'm called to. That was the word God gave me. So as I stepped out on that, whatever word it is, it might be build me subdivisions. I know a man, great, great uh, worship leader, actually. He builds the most amazing subdivisions and houses and he's so happy and he's providing and, 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 and he, of course, he still worships and, uh, he, he still sings and he still does it, but you know, he found something, God, God, God will give you something to do that'll, that'll provide for you glory. If that's what he, some of us are just. We're not supposed to be kings. God said, I'm your inheritance. You're a Levite. Please, can can you, you know, let me do something on the side? Maybe, you know, just. Uh, <laughs> no, I am your inheritance. So, all right. So each one of these, let's let me read some more. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob blessed the sons of Joseph and worshiped. By faith, Joseph, <clears throat> notice these verbs, gave commandment concerning his bones. <clears throat> That's an unusual thing you would think. Why was that mentioned in the, well, because it took, it must have been a real high faith, uh, uh, faith achievement for it to be mentioned in this Hall of Fame here in Hebrews. By faith, Joseph made mention, see, again, he did something, he spoke of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses was hid three months by his parents. <clears throat> by faith, Moses refused to be called refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming, by faith, he esteemed the reproach of Messiah or carrying the anointing and glory of God. That's what that means. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. By faith, he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He saw the heavenly reward. And once you see the heavenly reward, it swallows up every other ambition and desire you have. Oh, you just, you know what? 
once you see that the heavenly riches, oh my gosh, you see one of those crowns, you say, oh Lord, help me. Help me to gain the crowns and crowns that you have. Sometimes, some of you have more than one crown. Yeshua does. Crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon the throne. Some have different crowns. There are different crowns. There's 10 different crowns in the Bible. There's like, Anyway, yes. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. So the firstborn, the death will not, the death angel wouldn't touch them. By faith, what? They passed through the Red Sea. So again, pass, that's a, that's a verb. They did something. Each one of these is a response to a faith, a vision, a word, a specific revelation, rhema word from God. Stretch forth your rod and the Red Sea parted. Some of the commentary on that at the Red Sea was Moses, by faith, walked in. So, you know, perhaps, I, I mean, they, he, he walked into the water <laughs> and he got all the way up to here. And he kept walking and then it parted. <laughs> God may wait till the last minute because he's a, he loves it when we trust him more than our senses. He loves when we trust uh, what he says to us. Uh, and put, put all our, put, I mean, just put, go all in on that word from God to where if you fail, if you're going to fail, just crash and burn. I mean, really, really spectacularly fail. Don't just partially do it. Get out of the boat and walk on the water. God says, come, come. As, and I tell you what, when you start living that way, it's very risky, but it's also very exciting. And that's where the miracles are. The reason why so many evangelical Christians, bless their darling hearts, uh, they, they don't ever see God in the now doing miracles. They think God did it back then. Oh, yes, God did it at the Red Sea, you know. God And yes, God's going to do it someday in the sweet by and by. Jesus is going to come. and Oh, yeah. But what about, I mean, thank God for the sweet by and by pie in the sky. But what about the rotten now and now? What about the, what, what about the, you know, I believe in pie in the sky, but I believe in steak on the plate too. God can give me steak on the plate right now. And he can give me pie in the sky after a while over there. Thank you very much. He's a living God. He's a now God. He's the same. He is a miracle working God. He hasn't passed away. He hadn't ceased. He hasn't cessated. He hasn't, the Holy Spirit didn't go on a vacation. He didn't, he's the same miraculous God that's in the Bible. The problem isn't God. The problem is your unbelief. That's the problem. The problem is you don't really believe he can do it. And he can't do it if you don't believe it. If you can believe, all things are possible. How do you believe? By getting out of your peanut human brain, uh, intellectual Western Christianity, uh, uh, computation, and into your heart, your spirit. Build up that part of you. Pray in tongues. You don't know how to pray. You're a spiritual idiot. I don't care how smart you are. I'm talking to some Presbyterian or somebody right now. Who knows? Who knows who's tuning in? <laughs> but uh, we, we're, we, we don't know anything. You have two big, huge, gigantic problems, which is why I'm, and so do I, which is why I am one of those tongue-talking, charismatic, fanatic swing from the chandelier, and there aren't any chandeliers anymore. I still swing from them. Hallelujah. Uh, why am I like that? Because I learned one thing. I don't know how to pray and I don't know what to pray for and I need all the help I can get. And bless God, I'm going to let God pray for me. He'll pray perfectly through me. He says, you, you, you have a big problem and it's you. And I'm going to just circumvent the whole, I'll just pray through you my perfect words, my perfect prayer, and I'll decree it. I'll pray it through you. And then, 
Hallelujah. If you let God pray for you hour after hour, day after day for 40 years, you'll start seeing the supernatural and life will begin to flow all the time, 24 seven in a divine river, <laughs> just like Jesus. Why? Because I abandoned my life to him, especially my prayer life. I don't know what to pray for, so I gave up. I prayed two things. I do know to pray God's word, so I pray the promises of God. Hallelujah. And <clears throat> the rest of the time, <clears throat> you miserable outfit. You don't know what to pray for. You don't know how to pray for it. And you're trying to do it all in your head. You fool. Somebody taught you wrong. You've been trusting senses. You could have had it all along. <laughs> That's what David Ingalls wrote. Oh, you dear poor doubter. Somebody taught you wrong. <laughs> you are trusting senses. You could have had it all along. You'll never get Abraham's blessing with a Thomas kind of faith. The mountain will just stand there in the same old place. If you have to see it first, hear it or touch it or taste, you'll never get Abraham's blessing with a Thomas kind of faith. Abraham didn't see it or feel it either one, yet he staggered not at the promise of God concerning the Holy One. He kept on giving glory, was strong and didn't faint. The faith that will not waver is the kind of faith it takes. And it's the kind of faith that takes. It's a possession. It's a right now. I got it. It's mine. <laughs> he gave it to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. How did I get to preaching? Well, you know what? It's fun. Um, <clears throat> let's look at a few more of these things. And I see tonight uh, we didn't get to Dr. Schaefer's manifesto this evening yet, but that's all right. We'll get there. That's what I love about these every day. You know what the most wonderful thing is? I don't have some pastor or uh, minister saying, we want everything you got, Brother Maurice. Oh, yeah, just pour it out upon us. You have 12 and a half minutes. And then uh, sit down, play sit down and, and it's my show now. <laughs> well, that's fine. I don't mind. I love playing specials and songs. I've done a lot. I've raised a lot of money for a lot of, <laughs> a lot of preachers. <laughs> yeah. They found out, wow, if you, if you get Maurice to play, it'll triple your offering. <laughs> it's a, what? And you know what? I will play, I will play for you again. Yes. Well, it, you know, that's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I believe in tripling offerings. That's good. Uh, uh, three times is better than just one. I mean, a monkey understands two bananas better than one banana, better than no banana. <laughs> However, you know, I love that I can go and do whatever God wants and nobody's sitting me down and shutting me up. That's so much fun. Even if there's just 30 souls listening or whatever. I, it's all right. The whole world. I, God said to me in March, right, right after we, this thing hit, you know, and uh, all my traveling. I mean, what am I going to do now? I said, so God, when I don't know what to do, I said, Lord, what should I do? And he, he, he said, look at your phone. I said, my phone. Yeah. He said, look at that phone. Did you understand that I've given you a TV ministry to the whole world for free? I said, what? What do you mean? He said, well, just go on. He said, nobody's stopping you. He said, just go on. And then he gave me the whole, I mean, he just downloaded it. I'm not doing my own thing in that sense. He told me this exactly what to do. How did, and he tells me every day and he leads me. But he gave, it just was a birth of a whole new phase of my life, whole new ministry. And it's such a joy and it's therapeutic for me because I don't sit around like a neurotic musician all depressed 
uh, anymore. Not that I was most, I mean, I'd overcome it, but sometimes some days are better than others. And I have less bad days now than I used to. Praise the Lord. I'm getting better all the time. Uh, you know, well, why are you that way? You should, with all that you do, you should be, hey, I have the same flesh you do. I live in the same, and I'm, you know, God wires musicians and artists real sensitive and we feel everything and all that kind of thing. Um, so the Lord had to really help me. He still does every day. I lean on him every day. You got to understand, I had to learn how to live. I mean, I know I'm a new creation. I'm complete in him. But I had to, uh, at 21 years old, I broke. I completely broke. Uh, on the inside, too much pressure on me, too long. And uh, I had to relearn how to live. And I've had to lean on God ever since. And like that wonderful message Benny Hinn preached the first time, it was the first time I came to OCC, Orlando Christian Center, 92. And there he was with the hair and the, you know, and take it and pick him up and all that stuff. Back in the days when he threw his coat and everything, it was awesome. Well, was he for real? Oh, yeah, he was for real. Absolutely. But anyway, was he perfect? Absolutely not. I sure am not. Are you perfect? Hmm, don't think so. But anyway, so he was preaching. He preached a message that got a hold of me and just shook me. Shook me. Because I understood it. He was talking about Jacob. And he said, Jacob wrestled with the angel, you know. He wrestled with the angel. And I can still remember him with that fancy Italian hand-painted tie, you know. And he was preaching. And I, I, I was like, I was there. I talked about it. Because it, it branded itself inside of me, that message. He said, Jacob walked with a limp. And he says, Every great servant of God walks with a limp. I said, wow. And remember how Jacob wrestled with the angel and um, <clears throat> and uh, that was maybe the Lord himself or the angel of the Lord. We don't know exactly. Uh, it might have been an archangel. Might have been, who knows? It was, the, it, was a, it was a heavenly being. It might have been the Lord himself in a pre- uh, uh, before Yeshua had his body or something. I don't know. But he wrestled all night long. He says, I won't let you go till you bless me. And it says, the break of day. And it says the angel finally, he just wouldn't let him go. That's faith. That's good. And finally the angel struck him in, the, in, the, in his strongest muscle, the strongest leg muscles we have, or, or it was that muscle, and he, he hit him and and that was a seed of his natural strength. And then he yielded. But it says when that happened, God changed his name. And changed his name to Israel. Prince with God. He was no longer a deceiver, supplanter. He was no longer a conniver. He was no longer that same person. And it said, at this amazing scripture, and... I feel the anointing on this so wonderful. Hallelujah. Uh, and it says, And the sun arose upon Israel, and he walked with a limp the rest of his life. He had to lean on his staff. Hmm? Hallelujah. And you see, God will touch you in the very part of you that you're the most gifted, most strong in, and make that an area where you need to grab a hold. You, you have to. Oh my! There went my. See, I didn't even, didn't even get the. He had to walk, with help, and God said, "I'll be your staff, your rod, thy rod and staff. They comfort me. I'll be your strength." So you're walking through life. Well, you can't see some people's. You know, they, they used to say handicapped or special needs or whatever you want to call it. You know, you can see it. It's physical. You know, maybe somebody doesn't have an arm or 
somebody that has a, you know, a, some sort of a, a you know, no, the blind or the whatever. Uh, <clears throat> they have some physical thing. But some people might have an infirmity in the soul, might have something that the very thing, well, that's what happened to me. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not believing God and I believe I'm restored and all that stuff. I know. I believe that more than you do. I live out of that, that uh, the mind of the spirit. I depend on, but, I, but there was something in me that if I don't lean on God, for many years, I couldn't get my pants on. And yet God gave me a ministry uh, and I went out flat out for 10 years uh, by myself. I didn't have anybody to help me in those first 92 through, through uh, well, 91, 91 through 2001. And then right at 9-11, when those towers fell, I was in New York. I was on Long Island and something happened to me. I had a relapse of the a breakdown I'd had in 1986, which was, uh, there's no way without God's supernatural strength that I could ever have gotten up from that. I should, if it wasn't for this word right here, uh, the grace of God uh, and uh, prayer and God's moment by moment leaning on him, I would either be in an institution right now or in some some place, not you know, some sort of care facility, or I would be dead off the side of the New York Bridge because I'd really determined. To, I mean, I knew, I I knew, it, and why? Well, I was on fire as a Christian for three years before that, four years, and I I still I just broke. Why did you break? I don't know. I, there's reasons, there's psychological things. I understand that. I work very hard. I still work very hard on myself so that I can... <clears throat> but out of this came uh, certain habits that I cultivated, leaning on the Lord, and I learned how to practice God like I did the violin so I could live. Well... Gradually, <clears throat> by 1990, I was strong enough to, you know, I was, I had, I, I had an adult life. Uh, God had just helped me get back up again and keep going. <clears throat> well, then, <clears throat> 91, God called me through that supernatural uh, experience I had in my car in March of that year. <clears throat> I met Pastor Benny Hinn a month later. Uh, and, uh, uh, or so, uh, yeah, well, actually, that's yeah, probably that much. It was very, it was somewhere around that time in the spring. And, uh, I, then I just went flat out full-time ministry. God had me preaching all and playing and just, and then, in, and then I, <clears throat> I, I didn't know. I mean, I had things out of balance or whatever. I had a, I had, uh, I didn't know how to have a family, a marriage. I just faithed the whole thing best I could. <clears throat> Made some mistakes, but I didn't. Uh, but there I was. And then I collapsed again. <clears throat> September, seven, 19 years ago. And this was serious. Went back to Tulsa for a year and a half. Couldn't minister, couldn't travel. <clears throat> I had an enormous uh, uh, monster that had to be fed every month, money, because I didn't understand money. <clears throat> I got myself in too high because my uh, former wife liked, <clears throat> liked that. And I wanted to be a faith man like all those other Tulsanian faith people I knew and I had to prove it by showing how you know in the natural or whatever so I was a word of faith guy and I was gonna and I and because God opened such a huge door because the gift of the music and I was able and I learned how to just function and raise money and do the whole I understood the ministry machine I I understood the game I understood 
I, I learned how to do it. And, uh, well, <clears throat> but then, uh, suddenly I was struck again in my hip, if you will, whether God did it or the devil did it or whatever it, I mean, you know, and this time it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as easy. And even then it wasn't easy, but it took me a year and a half. And then, uh, no matter what I did, <clears throat> I couldn't climb out of the feeding the monster, money monster, thousands every month. And I finally, I got out, I got out of balance, got in trouble. And I, I just, I went back into depression. Then I started listening, you know, I started going to therapy with this, with this uh, Christian, charisma, whatever, this uh, psychiatrist. And he uh, put me on medicine that knocked me out half the day. I mean, lot, knocked, I couldn't function at all in the morning because of the medicine. And then, <clears throat> and no matter what I did, I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my uh, uh, marriage. I couldn't, I couldn't make it work. I couldn't, I, I couldn't provide at that level and I didn't know what to do. And I cried out for help for a year and a half. I said, please help me, somebody, you know, and I went to people, ministry leaders in Tulsa and I'd say, I, I, I need help. I, I can't do this this way anymore. Well, they all meant well and they prayed for me and they pat me on the back. And there's only one man that actually walked with me and his name was Dave Roberson and he, he just kept, he said, he just stood with me and he listened to me and, and he says, you're going to make it. Maurice, you're going to make it. I said, I, I have, I, I can't, I can't. It was too much. Well, I remember the day when it came, January 2003, when two angels literally carried me, put me into my car and said, drive to your father's house in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, you will never live in Tulsa again. And I left, I took my violin, I took my Bibles, I took my music and a few things and packed the car. Uh, my ex-wife had uh, <clears throat> was in New York for Christmas, but went without me with the children because I, I couldn't, I couldn't function most of the day anyway. And, uh, she was so, she, she, anyway, so there I was, I left and I drove and I came to, and I, and I never looked, I never came back. And I, the condemnation from that, uh, was so horrible because I, one thing I never wanted to do was uh, divorce and uh, hurt my children. I had two, I have two children, one of whom's in heaven now. The other one, um, has been, I don't know where she is, but she's in a faraway land, but God's, God's got her. Anyway, so I don't know how I got into this, but I'm, I'm telling you my testimony. Uh, I'm trying to show you that it's not about being macho faith guy or something. It's about, it's about, it's about trusting God in your weakness. He's your strength. His grace is sufficient. It doesn't change the message of faith. It's still the same message, uh, that I first heard in 1984, uh, in Aspen, Colorado at the music festival in the Bible study, same message, same message of victory. But I learned, I learned that, that, uh, learned how to depend on God. All great men of God walk, or whether or great or not, whatever, all, anybody, walk, anybody, there's an area of brokenness. If you're going to see the power of God, you're going to see somewhere there's a jar of clay that's been broken and out of that, all those shards and, and God just holds that person together. And that's where, 
That's where you see it. I glory, this is a scripture, I glory in my infirmities, Paul writes. That's the theme of 2 Corinthians, that the anointing and the glory, the power may rest upon me. And uh, we usually cycle through the weakness into the resurrection and into the weakness into the resurrection. And that's, a, that's just a cycle that we go through as long as we remain in these bodies. It's a mystery. I don't quite understand it. I look forward to the moment of glorification where this mortal shall put on immortality. Amen. And we will never again, never again fail. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> I wind up in a little RV park, an old clock named Georgia, south of Georgia near the Florida border in a little town that's in Sugar Mills RV Park with Jimmy Groover. Now, they had a little town there, tiny town, and uh, but uh, he, Jimmy, and his friends that lived in the RV park there were creating their own sovereign nation. <laughs> they didn't want to pay taxes anymore. Remember that time? And, the, you know, bless their hearts. They were believers, but he said, Jimmy, Jimmy said, well, now, Maurice, I once had a tough time, and I had to break down, and I couldn't do it. And you know what? You can just stay in that RV cabin as long as you have to. I'll charge you just a little bit every month. Just pay my expense. You can just stay there, and you go play for Pastor Benny, and, and you come and stay here, and, and it's all right. And after a while, we're going to have our own nation. <laughs> Well, that never happened. I stayed there for about a total of four, four six months, something like that. And uh, so I lived in this little RV cabin during the worst of this time, the most despair. I was so exhausted. I was hurt by ministry. I was hurt by 10 years of just getting just full time going flat out exhausted. I had all kinds of things. And I'm not saying this for you to, oh, poor. No, no, no. No, no. I was in, most of the day, I was laying down in a fetal position in bed because of all the medicine. I had so much medicine. Oh, God. And uh, <clears throat> one day, one afternoon, Jesus walked into the RV cabin, walked into that and physically, and sat down in my bed. I'm not, not in my bed, in the chair next to my bed. I had a little air conditioner. Uh, it was a tiny little place. It wasn't anything fancy. But, and the Lord sat there with me. And I was so upset and so broken and so full of fear. And, I mean, not fear, but condemnation and, and depression. And just, I knew he was there. I heard him. I heard him walk in open the door, walk in. I knew he was there. Uh, and I wouldn't look at him for about an hour or two. I was just sitting there. He just sat there, just sat there. I knew he was looking at me. So finally, he said, Maury, I love you. And I looked over him, and there he was. In his, in his body, he was there. It was, it was Jesus. It was Yeshua. I had only seen him physically one other time. There's only been two times he's appeared to me like that. The other time was in 1989 when he, uh, when he, he gave me the revelation, on, revelation for the midnight hour. And he, it was a, a deposit made in my spirit. And I mean, I, he was spent the afternoon with me. I had lunch with him. I ate with him at Drusilla's Seafood Restaurant. Ina Ruth. <laughs> But the, this time he was there, but I was a broken man. I mean, maybe you can survive one breakdown, but two. And I'd, I'd abandoned my children and I had, I, I, I didn't do it. I hadn't fallen into sin or thank God. That was only God's mercy too, because I didn't care any, anymore. I didn't care anymore. I would, I, I, I just, I couldn't keep myself. I quit. I just quit. Part of me quit. In fact, part of me never quit from that time on. I still, I'm not the same. When those towers fell, I fell. A part of me. And part of that was the 
the strength that I had in the natural, I had I was able to do a lot uh, by God's grace, of course, all of it. But so there I am. And then the Lord says to me, he says, well, I don't believe you're ma I, you're making this up. So, no, I'm not making this up. God forbid. Why? Maybe I just was so desperate. I needed this. And you're so you're so spiritual. You don't need God like this. Well, I did. So God had mercy on a poor, desperate, wretched man that I was. So <clears throat> he said, you haven't failed. I, I said, well, you could have fooled me. It looks like everything in my life just failed. And then he said, you haven't lost it. You've actually won. And I didn't understand that either. But I was so angry. I was angry at God. I, I was even seeing him. I knew, I knew he, I believed in him. And, and, uh, but even seeing him physically didn't do it. I mean, I was just in a, in a pit. I couldn't get out. Uh, <clears throat> and the uh, uh, amazing thing about this was I ministered throughout this entire <laughs> Uh, two years that this happened, 2001 through 2003. I, I would minister anyway, because at night, usually I feel a little better. That's why I'm the best at night. That's why I do these meetings in the night, because I've, I function better in the evenings usually. Uh, now I'm, I'm fine pretty much. But So anyway, so there's a, a, he said, he said, for the rest of your life, all I want you to do are five things that start with the letter P, so you remember them. I just stared at him. I was, okay, what? He says, I want you to pray. I want you to practice because you're a Levite. He said that to me. He said, you're my Levite. You're one of my, and he said, when you practice, it glorifies me, and I receive every note as worship. I said, yes, sir. Okay, well, I didn't say yes, sir. I just listened at this time because I was still, I wasn't really in my right mind most of the time. So <clears throat> then he said, I want you to preach. I want you to perform, and I want you to prophesy. And then he said, you can eat, you can sleep, and you can go to the bathroom. And I will take care of everything else. And he just looked at me and says, is it a deal? I said, well, how in the world am I going to do that? How am I going to survive? You know what I mean? I couldn't think. I said, yes, I can do that. I can do that. But I'm telling you right now, Lord, that's all I'm going to do for the rest of my life, the rest of my days. That's all I am going to do. I won't build my... He says, I don't want you to, to work and try to build your ministry or your reputation or your name or, uh, you know, try to, you know. And he said, my ministers... My ministers, my Levites, actually, my servants, uh, he said, they're trying to build empires down here. They want to rule and reign down here as kings. They build vast empires of religion and um, power. And I never told, I said, if you suffer with me down here, you'll reign with me in heaven. He said, you'll rule and reign with me in heaven. He said, uh, he said, most of all of those, that the ministry machine is not my will. It's not, I said, there's a better way. And he said, I'm going to, I'm your friend. 
and I'll walk with you. And actually the truth of the matter, he never left that cabin. He's never left me, but I don't see him physically. I only saw him physically that one time. I've seen him in visions a number of times, spiritually, but I've not seen him in, in physical, uh, the man, uh, the, but that. And he said to me, he hugged me and he said, he said, you're gonna get better. And then he said, uh, I'm going to send someone to help you. It was only a few weeks later, maybe, that uh, that summer that I met Devora in New York City. She was a new believer, uh, come out of the Orthodox Jewish world in New York City real estate, commercial real estate for 20 years. She used to do deals with Trump, believe it or not. With the, or I mean, she was a, a go-getter, you know, in those days and, uh, you know, still is, of course, but <clears throat> gotten saved by listening to a Sid Roth tape uh, right around the, uh, uh, right around the 9-11 time uh, and uh, was attending a church that met right at Ground Zero there it was a faith faith church there. Still there, I think. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, I ended up moving to New York City shortly after. She nursed me back. We weren't in sin, but I did. She took care of me. Uh, I married her at City Hall. I didn't have a wedding, but married her at City Hall in December of 2003. Lived in New York, and uh, for all practical purposes, I thought, well, I'm not ministering anymore. I guess I'd go back into classical music. So I started, uh, I made some contacts when I was freelancing in New York, and I started playing again a little. But God would always have something. I'd end up ministering, and very often, at least once a week, I, somewhere to somebody. I, I, it, I, the 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 ministry never died. It just kept going. I mean, all through this, I would get up, even at Jimmy Groover's. You know, he had a little ca um, in Georgia. There, he had we we would have these uh, meetings at least once a week. You know, quite a bit, or at least through most of the summer. I can't remember exactly, but we, we had that place. It was a, 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 what do you call it? A rec center, your rec room, whatever you rec. That place was packed out. We had, we had revival meetings in this little tiny town. It was right next to Thomasville. And they would come up from all around and they listened to me and, you know, and, and it made me so mad because the anointing never left. It got stronger and I didn't want it anymore. I said, please, God, just find somebody else. I quit. You know, I remember I was up in New York City in the, uh, <clears throat> in the, uh, 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 gosh, I was staying on the Upper West Side right after 9-11 for a couple of weeks in an apartment with a lady. Thank God I didn't sin, which is a beautiful woman, a nurse that, I, the reason I didn't fall into sin with her is because I fell on my knees when I got in the apartment and said, Lord, I can't, I can't resist this. Uh, if you don't, you'll have to do something or I'll fall. And somehow, and it just, God kept me. <laughs> so there I am, and I'm listening to this old cassette of, or, you know, or CD, or I don't know, it's the old, of, of, uh, who is that singer who used to sing for, uh, that really good uh, rock singer that was in Genesis, uh, the lead singer after Peter Gabriel, what was his name? Anyway, Phil, Phil Collins, and he's a, that song from the early 80s, I don't care anymore. And I was screaming that out. I don't care anymore. I was so hurt and broken and my, my wife had turned on me. And <clears throat> so, so I was... I was done with ministry. I didn't want it. I didn't. I, I, I did it. I said, I gave 10 years, God. And uh, at least I know I can play the violin. So uh, I can do that. Uh, even if I'm so broken, I can't function the rest of the day. At least I get up and play. Well, so I started playing in some of the groups. And 
you know, the orchestras there and did a little bit of freelancing. <coughs> and then in the fall of, sorry, in the summer 2004, Devorah gets a call from this Chinese man in Los Angeles. Hello, is, I'm looking for Maurice Kla. Is he there, you know, and whatever. And he says, yeah, yeah, he's here. And he said, I've been looking for this. I have a cassette tape. We shall behold him. And I wore this thing out. I heard him in Hawaii when he was with Ulf Ekman and this increased seminar for Bob Harrison. And 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 uh, he played this, oh, we shall behold him. And, well, he, he says, I'm... And and so they got to talking, and Devora can talk. So she's talking to him, and he's uh, he's listening. And it turns out this man was an apostle. I mean, a real, a real bona fide, you know, uh, I mean, amazing man of God that had. He was once. His name was Ernest Chan, Doctor Ernest, Doctor Ernest Chan, and he was a Presbyterian that had gotten baptized in the spirit in the 70s, or I think it was, or 80s, and and he turned his world upside down, and now he has this <clears throat> ministry of bringing revival into all the Taiwanese churches all over Asia, and all the Chinese churches, you know, Chinese, really, Chinese churches, and he's just, and he's bringing, <clears throat> and he says, I have a conference, this international agape, it was his name of his organization, uh, I have this uh, this international conference I'm bringing in. He says, I, would you come and play for us? But actually, he said, you know, I'm coming to New York first. That's right. He says, I ha we have a, a little a part. One of his churches was in upstate New York, uh, right near a church I had attended when I was at Juilliard, it was right north of, on the uh, near Nanuet, it was a church called Redeeming Love Christian Center. It was a utter box. It was a faith, a rhema church. I used to take the bus up there, you know, in the 80s and go, well, he said, I'm, it's in Nyack, Nyack College. I want you, would you come up and do a meeting? Well, or I mean, just play. I'm, I'm going to be speaking and would you just play? Would you play? That? Oh, play or we shall behold him. I said, okay, okay, yeah. So I said, well, sure. I want <laughs> So we drive up there and we're late. Oh dear God, we we had a problem with time back then. I'm getting better at it. We're we're both getting better at it. I I had we had this was very anyway. So I played and there was this young man who was an evan that young evangelist that he was raising up and. He was trying so hard to move in the healing. Oh, bless his heart. And he was, and nothing was happening. Nothing, nothing. Oh, God. And they were just, but they were all, oh, they're so hungry. And they're just, so I, I we got there late. So I played at the end of the meeting. So after he, he finally sat down, he says, well, okay, well, let's have Maurice play before we close tonight. You know, he got here an hour and a half late, but okay. So I get up and I play. I hadn't played it in a, quite a while. And it's like God just blew up a hydrogen bomb in the spirit. It just, just like it was, I mean, uh, 10 years before, you know, 12 years before. Same thing, just heaven ripped open and he, God came in like a freight train, you know. And people started getting healed and falling out on the power and, you know, and, and I mean, and I'm sitting there and I'm mad. I said, God, I, I told you, I don't want this anymore. Give it to somebody else. I mean, I was actually, I was, I was angry. I didn't want it. I don't want it. You can have all that. I was so tired of all the games and the stuff. And, but it was, it was, you know, okay. So there I am, and I I sit down. I didn't want to do anything. I I says, well, that's nice. 
uh, it's, that's your problem, God. Well, this, this evangelist got so excited and this Chinese man was laying hands on everybody and, and finally something was happening, you know, and, and revival and whatever. So then he has me come to Los Angeles in the summer of 2005. And we were in a position where God gave us a miracle because we didn't have any money, <laughs> no money. And we somehow lived in New York City for all of 2003 and 2004, eating out three meals a day, uh, uh, like I did when I, I mean, that's, I didn't, I know how to cook and Devorah was in, she, she had, she lived very well for a long time. And so she wasn't used to cook. I mean, and, you know, in that world and she didn't have, I mean, but we were, and she had, God had led her to quit her job. We didn't know what, or something happened. So there we are and uh, <clears throat> didn't know what to do. We'd somehow get a little money every, we were making it. And we end up moving out to um, Pomona, California, Walnut something. And so we were in this little uh, little home that uh, was a modular uh, double wide, you know, and it was a missionary house that he had had that, uh, through a friend and they rented it to us and Agape. And so for one year, all I did was travel with Ernest Chen, all I saw were Chinese Christians. And we traveled all through Asia. It opened all of Asia. I started going to Asia, just for, especially that year. <clears throat> and uh, what I liked about that was that uh, the Chinese Christians don't look too close at you, you know? And I can go in and play and I can rest the rest of the day. And, and I wasn't in very good shape. I was, you know, I was okay, but enough to function. But Devorah took care of me. I mean, literally took care of me. She saved my life, okay? Totally saved my life. Uh, and uh, so as I did this, though, and traveling around, I was getting stronger. Uh, and I was able to function better. And there's one, but there was one man that, one man that never never quit on me and that's why I said I'll never quit on him either well I said that before because God told me that was Benny Hinn he called me up when I was in that terrible time in 2001 and said uh, I want you to come and play play in the crusades I said uh, Pastor Benny I'm he says I don't care I'll pray for you God will fix you up he says uh, I said well I I can't do the morning meetings because uh, I'm on too much medicine. He said, that's all right, just get here. You just do the evening then, just do the evening. So I'd come in there during that time. I still played for him. Uh, and, and sometimes it was very difficult to get there. But once I got there, and then when Devora came around, of course, right at first, uh, we had a battle and uh, my ex-wife lied and said that I ran off with, with this woman and whatever. Oh, it was terrible what happened to those my children. And it's crazy how the devil tried to wipe me out. But so there, so we ended up staying on the West Coast. And then uh, I got custody of my children after a, a two-year court battle. And we got them out of an abusive situation in Tulsa and and so they spent four or five years with us. Uh, we were living in the high desert then in uh, Victorville, uh, California area. And, uh, and then, it was, uh, then it was in 2014 that, uh, uh, well, I started, I had, we were driving up through central California to go visit my daughter who was, attending uh, the Berkeley School uh, in uh, Oakland area. So we would drive up through the Central Coast and somehow we found out about this little place called the Healing Rooms. So I ended up uh, ministering there and, and several times and then, and then the intercessors and got a hold of me here, I guess, and they invited 
us to come here. And I thought, I knew, we got lost the first time we came here because because the, the the GPS said go up into the mountains and and instead of staying on 101, you know, and we were up in the and the road just ran out and there we are and they have a five o'clock Monday night meeting and it's. 8.30 p.m. or something when we finally got, and they were still sitting there waiting. And, uh, you know, and God just gave them a love for us, uh, these wandering Jews or whatever we were. Uh, and uh, God moved in such a powerful way. So I would, uh, when we would come back and forth, uh, I would stop in and minister and visit. And we got, and uh, then the Lord, uh, and then, well, it got so it got so expensive in California, like it it is. So we were trying to move. I said, "Let's move." Uh, we were going to move to Tampa, Florida area, and we had picked out a house uh, that we thought we could afford. It, uh, you know, uh, and uh, we were believing God for the whatever deposit, and we were because there was a wonderful Messianic congregation there, and. Uh, there's a lot of Messianic Jewish congregations in Florida because a lot of the New York Jews that got saved and they were down there and and I, we thought well that's a little it's less expensive so we were about set to to move there and uh, uh, Lori Taylor here writes us a little note and she's very famous for her short uh, short little messages that have a lot in them <laughs> she said. Why don't you move here? <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, you know, somehow we ended up, uh, the Vora talk, and they started praying, and God just brought us here. And, and he provided in a miraculous way. And so we've been here now for, uh, we're going on our seventh year. We're in our seventh year. And uh, the Lord said, I'm going to give you seven years of rest and restoration. Uh, rest, And, and uh, he said, I'm going to give you seven years uh, here where I will completely and restore the foundations of your life. And so I've been through some things like uh, restoring the foundations, which was an amazing inner healing ministry that, that really helped me to grab a hold of uh, some generational strongholds and things that I couldn't get victory and now and so uh, after that about half the pain in my inner life left which is just that was like heaven on earth thank God uh, and the rest of it has been slowly and it seems slow but God has removed it nearly uh, So I can understand walking with a limp. <laughs> but God uses you if you'll just not give up. And sometimes I think it's wrong when we give our testimonies and just, you know, present our lives like we're Superman, you know, or Wonder Woman, and you know, and or it all magically, I got saved and it all magically just, transformed. You know what? That's when my problem started. I got saved. I was 13 years old and it's been war ever since, but it's been victory. God's brought me through it all. Through it all. You know that the hymn says, through it all. So I went way longer than I intended to, but I just work here, you know. <laughs> I thought I was going to read from Francis Schaeffer's book tonight, but I guess it wasn't. So by faith, faith doesn't mean you always feel good. Have you noticed that? <laughs> but God is faithful. He's faithful. And I can testify. Uh, the hymn also is a one another wonderful hymn. Uh, uh, Be still my soul. The Lord is on thy side. The, he something owns the future, or he is the author of the future, as he was the past. Hallelujah. 
Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Lean on him. Lean on me, says the Lord. Lean on him. Just, just be a good leaner. And say, Lord, get me through today. And then a day will turn into another day. And a week and years. And finally you look back and you go, wow, look what God's done. Look what Jesus did. He carried me. That's why we can't glory. Oh, I did this because I'm just so stalwart or something. No. I have, I have one, been given one thing by God's grace. The ability to get back up again when I've been knocked down. I'm a professional at that. I can get back up. And I get back up fast now. Faster. Faster and faster until finally I don't fall as much. In fact, hallelujah, it's been a, the ups and downs are not as much now. Till finally I, I think, wow. Coming into my seventh year, the seven years, and it's good restoration. I don't have to fake it much anymore. I'm actually uh, fake it. It's not faking it, faith it. I've faced my whole life in a lot of pain. That's basically what I've done. I just walk through all the pain. And if you're honest, you'd probably say the same thing. Uh, when you give your testimony, there's power in it. But don't sugarcoat. Don't, be honest. Just say, hey, this is what happened. And I did the best I could. This is where I, I missed it. This is where I, I could have made better choice. I could have done things, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad when God corrects me, because then that means I, uh, he'll, he doesn't want me to go through th that stuff. Is, you know, and he wants to help me. And so that's who I am, and that's how I got here. And uh, there's a lot of good things happening. See, the wonderful thing about Jesus is he won't stay dead. Every death in Messiah is followed by a resurrection. Everything that, when it resurrects in the Lord, it starts multiplying and bearing fruit. And it's the kind of fruit that you can't fake. It's love stuff. It's kingdom stuff. It's you've been through the fire and... Job said, when I go through the fire, I shall come forth as gold. Because there's just something in me you can't kill. You understand that? Jesus in me won't die. You just keep getting stronger. And it'll be the more that way the next time you see me. We go from glory to glory to glory to glory. All you have to do, it's not even about, okay, I'm going to, win this. I'm going to win this. And no, you're just going to run it. God's already won it. You run it. Just run your race. He's the author and finisher. He's our victory. He's already won. All you have to do is if you've been knocked down, just get back up. And again, I'm thinking of that amazing uh, man that was, I think, in the Olympics, uh, don't remember his name, but one of you might. <clears throat> and he uh, uh, um, he was a sprinter, I think. And he, or he was a, you know, a, one of those uh, shorter distance runs and very fast, very fast, and one of the fastest in the world, or maybe he was going for the record, or, and just one of the most beautiful, lithe uh, uh, African American, right? just. I mean, when he ran, he was like a gazelle. It was just, and, uh, but he, uh, some, I think he tore his hamstring or he, he was in this, and, and his, his leg just 
completely gave out. It just gave out. And I mean, it exploded on him. And he was screaming in pain. And he couldn't, and he was going for the world's record, you know, in the most important race he had prepared his whole life, you know, probably. And he gets back up and he's screaming in pain and he's hobbling and he gets back on the track and his father runs out and runs right onto the track with him. The race is long done, it's done. But he comes and he takes him and he helps him and he finishes the race. Ah, ah, ah. And he wouldn't quit. And everyone stood up and cheered. That was the man that won the race that day. And that's when the glory comes, when you can't do it and you get up anyway. And when we just get back up and keep going, do you know what glory it brings to God? And if my life can be a testimony to one thing, it is I got back in the race and I didn't quit. And I won't quit. I'll never quit. Even though I tried to quit many times. There's something in me that cries out, Ava, Father, you are the Father of my spirit. And I've won this race in Messiah. And it's amazing. God will heal you as you go. Just one step in front of the other. One step in front of the other. This isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. This is a, this is a day by day. <clears throat> one, one step at a time. I don't care if you're screaming in agony. I love God and I believe God. See, faith is an act. And when you act, that's when the miracles happen. Don't believe you can't make it. You've already won. So run your race and bring glory to God. Amen. his glory oh thank you Lord. bless your people tonight I went way over so I'm just gonna bless you now I love you and if you can be encouraged by that if God can do do what he did with me surely you're gonna make it and you are gonna make it one day Soon, I'm going to enter into that arena. I'm going to, I'm going to hear. Because <sighs> the devil didn't win and couldn't stop me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and to God be all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Ina Ruth, that's sweet. Oh. Hallelujah. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. <clears throat> may the Lord be, lift up the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. <clears throat> may he lift up your head, Hallelujah. May God's glory be poured out upon you now. <clears throat> and may he give you his shalom peace. And may the grace of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the love of God, and the communion of the Ruach HaKodesh, the precious Holy Spirit, be yours now and forever. And I just want to say this. 
That good work he hath begun in you and I, he will complete. Thanks be unto God, who always gives us the victory through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Oh, this was a special night, and it was a, <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I know I went on for a while, didn't I? This was a, I think I understand, I'm beginning to understand Pastor Benny, though. He'd go for five hours, you know, and I, and it felt like it was, it just would, uh, and <clears throat> he might not go quite as long now, but you know what? I don't think he plans a thing, but it's the Holy Spirit can so take you over. That's what I felt like today. He just, he just took over, just took over. I hope you're blessed tonight by that. And hallelujah. If, uh, remember, we <clears throat> do depend upon you for uh, your gifts and your donations. Uh, sustain us and keep us going here at Beit, Beit Rafa's, the, uh, our broadcast uh, house of healing. Uh, and uh, Devorah and I are thankful for your your gifts. And if the Lord leads you to... <clears throat> to uh, donate this evening or any time. It's uh, at sklarministries.com. And uh, if there's a, a PayPal a donate button there, which is safe. <clears throat> now, I'll pray for you, <coughs> those of you that post, and I'll read it. I didn't get a chance to say hello tonight, but I will. Uh, God just got a hold of me. Felt like a hydraulic jack on my spirit from the time we started i just couldn't it's just you know um, he just that's all right that's good though i felt i felt the, i literally felt the that pentecost fire that power just hallelujah coming out i hope it blessed you tonight be encouraged i mean my goodness if, if anyone should have failed it should have been me why are you still here? <laughs> there must be a God. There is a God. And he's able to save to the uttermost. Those who come to him, cry out, call upon his name. And he's faithful. And he will deliver you. Don't give up. I feel love. I feel your love. I feel God's love. Is there anything else, Lord? Yeah, I'll just remember that I, yes, uh, that, that uh, I'll be praying for you if you have any prayer requests and you have uh, something that uh, you would like agreement about. I, I read every, I read every uh, note and I pray. I, at the minimum, I lift your name up, ask God to bless you. Pray in the Spirit, and uh, if you have a prayer request, I will, if I can, if it's according to God's Word, I can agree, and God will do it. <laughs> and I actually believe that He will do it. So you got somebody that will stand with you, and you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. And it's a privilege to come as... Uh, as your rabbi, as, as an online, as a friend, as a shepherd, as a privilege to serve you from the table of God. As I said that, I realized I didn't receive communion this evening. But that's all right. We'll do it tomorrow. You go ahead and receive communion. You know how to do it. <laughs> just, just receive. Just receive communion. Well, you know what? Why not? We've gone this far. Might as well. It's all right. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed, he
he took the, uh, the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you, for your healing, for your shalom, for your restoration, <clears throat> for you to be made whole. Jesus was broken. So you could receive strength, his strength in your infirmities, in your weaknesses, in your sicknesses and pains. He bore them all so that you could receive his resurrection life into this mortal body, into if you're suffering in your mind. If you need healing, receive from the table of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. This is the bread of Messiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And we were healed. <coughs> Hallelujah. Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed, took the cup. And he said, this is the New Testament in my blood, poured out for you, shed for you for the remission of sin, of the forgiveness of your sins. He became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Messiah. Hallelujah. Receive his resurrection life out of his death came forth life. This is now the cup of life. And he gives you eternal life. And that life is in his blood. There's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. Be renewed in your strength. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be, uh, be cleansed of uncleanness and sin. Open your heart. Give your life to Jesus. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your precious blood. I surrender to you right now, tonight. I receive the gift of eternal life, of salvation. Lord, I can't do this on my own anymore. I want that what I heard tonight. I don't want to live life on my own anymore. Save me from a devil's hell. I renounce Satan and darkness and sin and idolatry. I turn to you. I ask you take up the throne of my heart, Yeshua, my Lord, my Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you rose again from the dead, like the Bible says. And this is the old, this is truth. I turn from darkness and lies, I turn to you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my life, I give you my future. Make something beautiful out of my life. Do something with me that would please you. Thank you, Lord. Let me go to heaven with you when you appear, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. That's the greatest miracle of all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but receive everlasting, zoe, eternal, resurrection, glory, life. Amen. <laughs> This to to life, lechaim. I drink. I'll drink to that. Hallelujah. This is the blood of Messiah shed for you. Hallelujah. Receive His grace and strength tonight. Ooh. That was good. That was good. All right, well, that was a long one tonight. 
And of course, if you had to turn it on, you know, watch it another time, that's great. And I hope you got something out of that. Write me a little note and tell me, uh, you know, send along, uh, send along some finances if you can. That'll help us. Hallelujah. We're paying um, extra expenses for mom, Devorah's mom. She's, but her birthday's coming up. She's going to make it, I think. Uh, 91 years young, right? 91. She's so her birthday's coming up. We're going to celebrate it in a, in a, in a few days here. I, I think it's in two or three days. And she's actually been getting better. She's doing well. She's eating well. She's, she today was the first day uh, we were able to bring her out side in the backyard. We have a beautiful, beautiful backyard, and and she uh, she got to sit in outside and the see the. You know the birds and the you know and the flowers and everything and and the, the, so that was good. So she's able to sit up. So Devorah's just been really, really uh, steadfast, just helping her. And she says, as long as she's on this earth, we're going to take good care of her and believe God and help her. So I say, Amen, Amen. We're going to do it. So all right. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow night, Lord willing, uh, at six o'clock again. And um, thank you for being patient. We went quite a bit longer <laughs> than usual. All right. Well, uh, shalom to you. I'll be praying at 11 for you. Shalom, shalom. Sleep well. Have a wonderful night. God bless you.